When it comes to any Ferrari model, the factory will make numerous tweaks and additions to the car through the years, continually trying to evolve and excite their buyers. For the Ferrari Dino, the 206 was the very first of the Dino series, and it will always be the most coveted. However, as the car evolved into the 246, then the GTS, the final evolution of the 246, the Chairs and Flares model, is definitely the most collectible of the 246 series. The 246 is powered by the same 2.4-liter six-cylinder engine as its unflared counterparts. However, unlike the other Dinos, the flares allow for a 7.5-inch Campagnolo wheel, as opposed to the 6.5-inch Chromadora wheels on all other 246 Dinos. While the actual number of factory original chairs and flares cars is highly debatable, it's widely agreed that only 91 examples ever made it to the U.S. subscriber you probably already saw the video we just did of the blue chairs and flares Dino and this one is slightly different because it's a slightly darker blue and it's not metallic but the main difference between the two cars is this one is a factory original flares meaning it rolled out of Ferrari with these already on it and a lot of people uh, have converted these cars over the years so a new one would come out with the chairs which just means the Daytona seat inserts, but not the flares. So when the cars were being restored, a lot of times people would add on the flares. One of the main ways you can tell if it's an aftermarket flare or not is if you simply reach under here and feel the weld. On a factory one, it's very smooth. You can almost not tell where the line is. Whereas on many of the aftermarket ones, you could feel the butt weld kind of like a little lip right under there. Now, sometimes the aftermarket ones are done very well, so you can't feel that weld. But if you can feel it, it's almost guaranteed it's not a factory original Flair's car. This Dino and the other blue Dino were both restored to the same compulsive level by the same people. So they both went through a lot of detail. It was a father-son team who just made it a hobby to uh, have a nice project together and restore two chairs and flares Dinos. Not only was the Dino a tribute to Enzo's son, Alfredino, but it was also what sparked the rivalry between Ferrari and Porsche. So the 206 was a direct competitor with Porsche's 911, and it's definitely still up for debate which one was the better car. The chairs and flares are definitely one of the most rare, or actually they are the most rare of the Dinos, um, at least a factory one is, because only 91 of the GTS made it to the US, but there were only five coupes. So if you can get a coupe, Chairs and Flares US model car, there's literally only five of them. They are one of the most desirable Dinos there are. And we actually sold one about two months ago, but uh, it never showed up at our showroom. A lot of times we'll do quiet sales where it's direct from seller to buyer and we're just the middleman. So sadly, we weren't able to do a video on that car, uh, but hopefully we'll have another chance to sell one and we can show you one of the coupes, which are the rarest of the Dinos. Many people like to argue that the Dino isn't a real Ferrari, mainly because the name Ferrari doesn't appear anywhere on the car. In fact, everything is badge Dino, and Enzo did that on purpose. He, uh, when he first produced the Dino, he didn't like that it was a six-cylinder car, not a 12-cylinder car, so he didn't want to call it a Ferrari. Um, and so the Dino logo is everywhere from the tires, the wheel, the front, it's even cast into the engine. In fact, the only place on this whole car where the name Ferrari appears is on one little plate in the engine compartment. And the big reason a lot of people like to say that it's not a Ferrari is because, uh, 
Basically, back in the day, Enzo cared a lot more about his racing than he did street cars. And so in order to make the 206 race car, it had to go through homologation. And what homologation is, it's a rule um, where you have to have a car uh, mass produced. So it's supposed to show that it is uh, made for the street, but modified for the racetrack. It's kind of a silly rule, but basically they had to mass produce the Dino in order to keep racing the 206. S. So they asked Fiat to help cast and assemble the engines for the car. So these engines were put together by Fiat. Now people say, so they're Fiats. Well, no. The engines are designed by Ferrari. They are Ferrari designed, but they were simply put together by Fiat because Ferrari just didn't have the facilities to put together so many engines. And Fiat totally agreed with that because they were able to then produce their own car, a front engine ver uh, version, the Fiat Dino. And both cars are very similar in engine, not in looks, but in the engine, they both have the two liter aluminum blocks and a 2.4 liter cast iron block. The main difference between the two is the Fiat had an externally balanced crank, while as the Ferrari had an internal, internally balanced crank. I've done quite a few videos on Dinos now, and each one I try and make a little different and tell different facts and tidbits about the cars. Uh, so if you haven't watched those, definitely go back and watch those videos as well. One thing I realized that I had never talked about before is on these cars, a lot of time, a lot of thought goes into the styling of the car and certain creature comforts become a little kind of second hand. So one of the things I love about these cars is they didn't leave a lot of room for a visor. And so they made this little roll down visor that just sticks to the window. And I think it is the cutest thing ever. It's just the little tiny details on these cars that make them so unique and have a personality. Uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe and like it and I will have a lot more coming out very soon.